Thank you, Terry and music team and everyone making worship possible this morning. Uh, we continue our series, Turning Point, and this morning we are in Exodus chapter 2, verses 11 through 15, thinking about called from failure. One day after Moses had grown up, he went out to where his own people were and watched them all at their hard labor. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people. Looking this way and that way and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. The next day he went out and saw two Hebrews fighting. He asked them, who was wrong and why are you hitting your fellow Hebrew? The man said, who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, what I did must have become known. When Pharaoh heard of it, he sought to kill Moses, but Moses fled from Pharaoh and stayed in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts and minds this morning. Well, as I said, we're looking at called from failure. I don't know about you, but I'm already missing football. Uh, anyone? I know, I, hopefully we'll have professional football, but... Uh, this is Savannah's senior year in high school, and I had already vowed last year that we were going to go to every single home game, right? <laughs> so, not going to happen, at least in the fall, right? And I know folks are, are trying to make decisions uh, that have our kids, our youth, our college students um, in, in safe places. And so, I'm not being critical of that. Uh, but what I'm going to say is it's a little bit of a disappointment, right? Uh, we have so much in our house. It's just uh, football Saturday is exciting. Football Sunday is exciting, too. And we make appetizers and try to go all out and just enjoy it. And so a bit of a disappointment. But I was thinking about some of the lighthearted moments in football history. And the one that came to mind was the story of Roy Regals. And I don't know if you know the story of Roy Regals, but I, I love this. And so it was the Rose Bowl 1929 and the California Bears were up against the Georgia Tech uh, Bumblebees, I think it was at that time. In any case, Roy Regals was playing both sides of the line, to give him credit for this. So he was both uh, the nose guard and center. And so the story goes, and you can see the clips of it, is that uh, there was a fumble. And Roy Regals recovered the fumble, somehow got turned around and ran the wrong direction. Uh, 69 yards, the quarterback ran after him and tackled him on the one-yard line, right? And so um, then uh, they tried to punt the ball because they were afraid to do anything else, and it was blocked, and the opposing team, Georgia Tech, went in and got a, got a safety out of that, uh, two points. And so the next time the quarterback got into the huddle and Roy Regals was there, he turned to Roy and said, Roy, are you for us? Or are you against us? <laughs> Have you ever messed up in life? Have you ever had a, a moment when you, when you failed? Now, it's interesting because Roy Regals went on to be a very successful motivational speaker. The truth is, though, that he was actually an all-American at California, but this failure overshadowed all of that. They used to call him Wrong Way Roy. Man, how can you... How can you live down that kind of a thing? But he did go on to be a great motivational speaker. And think about some of the great blunders in history or some of the great failures. Uh, I recall that uh, DACA Records had a choice between two different groups in order to give a music contract back in the 60s. And they turned down, do you know which group? The Beatles, right? And they, they penned the contract with a group called the Tremlos. That did not turn out well for them. Uh, think of some other ones, too. J.K. Rawlings, the author of the Harry Potter series, if you're a Harry Potter fan, was turned down by 12 different publishers. Finally, uh, Goldings, I believe it was, the president's daughter read one of the books and recommended it to her dad. You know, the manuscript was laying there. Dad uh, wasn't very good, I guess, at teenage books, and so he went with his daughter's advice. Well, the rest is, is history. Bill Gates dropped out of Harvard. Uh, Beethoven was told that he didn't have any talent by his first piano teacher. Michael Jordan was cut for lack of athleticism from his high school basketball team. And Wayne Gretzky was told that he was way too light to ever make it in the pros in hockey. Lots of moments of failure. And I think in my own life, it came for me in the sixth grade. And 
I can't believe this, but in sixth grade, maybe you had a moment like this. I don't know whether I was looking out the window or whatever when the assignment was given, but I completely missed not one but two-part assignments worth 100 points. And so the, ga- the day came to hand in those assignments, and I had zip, nothing. And so I didn't just get an F. I got a zero. You, you know, that's a lot worse than that. So my parents found out about it that. I tried to hide it for a while. It didn't work out very well. But I did learn some lessons from that, which was to focus and make sure I have all my assignments in. Have you ever failed? Have you ever messed something up? Uh, in this Scripture passage this morning, I think there's some real consolation for us because Moses, the great saint, the great leader of Israel, fails and fails big. But here's the thing that I want us to remember. Moses took that failure, and somehow God turned it into something good. God turned it into a blessing. I think the same is true that God can do that in our own lives. God not only called Moses from failure, but God can call you and I from failure. And so I invite you to walk back into the story. And a lot of us want to go from Moses in uh, the bull rushes, right, as the baby put in the basket when Pharaoh's daughter sees that, and uh, Moses' his mother, because of Moses' sister, uh, is allowed to sort of become the, the nursemaid for Moses, and he's raised in the household of Pharaoh. And of course, we know that Moses went on to great things, but what we forget is this moment here in Exodus. And so you can only imagine the power and prestige that Moses had uh, for the first 40 years of his life as he grew up as the, basically the son of Pharaoh, the adopted son or grandson of Pharaoh. And he, he knew uh, power, he knew riches, he knew prestige, uh, but apparently he didn't know everything because one day he saw two people fighting. One was a Hebrew and one was Egyptian. And Moses has been told by his mother, schooled secretly, that he was in fact a Hebrew. And so Moses probably is torn between the riches and power and privilege of Pharaoh's life and the slavery, oppression, and injustice of the Israelites. And it boils over, and Moses kills the Egyptian and buries him in the sand. Well, the Hebrew runs away, and the next day Moses sees two Hebrews fighting, and he tries to intervene, and they both look at him and say, will you kill us like you did the Egyptian? And Moses realizes that it's not a secret, that word has gotten out that he killed an Egyptian, and he hears that Pharaoh knows about it, and so Pharaoh wants to kill Moses, and Moses flees to the desert region of Midian, and there sits down by the well. Wow, what a moment for Moses to think about failure. But here's some of the lessons that I think that God used that failure, and I think Moses would whisper to us some of these secrets of the lessons of failure, and the first is that failure humbles us. Failure humbles us. As Moses sat there by the well, along came the the daughters of Jethro. There were seven of them, and they were shepherds. And so Moses, in this moment, this person of power and prestige and authority, takes a moment of humility and waters the livestock of these young women, and he serves them, but he also serves them water. I think maybe Moses went from doing it his own way to a model of servant leadership, right? Right? And God was able to use that in a beautiful moment. Of course, Moses went on to marry one of these women, but also Moses learned the model of servant leadership would become his model of leadership with the Israelites down the road. What has God worked in your life that you can learn a chapter of humility and and learn to really become a better leader and a better person? One person I think of is Abraham Lincoln, and we all think of Lincoln's great leadership during the Civil War and taking our country through a very difficult time. But Lincoln, before he was president, actually failed at more than 10 elections. Can you believe that? So his record was one of failure along the way. But I think maybe in that failure, Lincoln was learning humility. And because of that humility, he was able to listen to both sides and navigate a course through the Civil War that brought us to the other side. A great leader learns from failure, and one of the greatest lessons is the lesson of, of humility. The second Lesson, I think, is that, that failure teaches us, right? I think about Moses in this moment, and it wasn't just this moment, but for the next 40 years. Can you imagine it? But remember, Moses became a shepherd for his father-in-law, Jethro, and he was out in the desert all this time. And while Moses was out in the desert, no doubt thinking about the mistakes and failure that he had made, he was also learning a lot of lessons. And some of the lessons that he was learning would be valuable later on. Think about it. Moses was learning how to navigate desert life. Moses was learning how to navigate where the wells and oases were in the very region he would later lead the Israelites through. 
Uh, for 40 years, they would wander in the wilderness, and Moses had learned the lessons of the wilderness, and so he was able to learn that in an in a incredible way. There's a great story about Tom Watson. You may have heard this, but he was the president CEO of IBM during the uh, uh, 60s and 70s, and he was a remarkable leader. But at one point, he delegated this special project to a young leader, a young executive in IBM, and it was several million dollars. And so he trusted them with seven millions to go out, million dollars to go out and to use it and to be innovative. And it turns out that young executive lost all those three million dollars. And the young executive was called to an appointment with uh, Tom Watson, and he just went ahead and penned his resignation letter. He knew exactly what was going to happen, and so he went into the meeting with this letter, and uh, Tom Watson began to talk to him, and, and this young executive said, listen, I, I went ahead and I already penned my resignation letter. Here it is. And Tom Watson looked at him and said, listen, uh, you can't resign. We can't afford to let you go. We just spent $3 million on your education. He was smart enough to know that this young executive learned from his mistakes, as we all can, and it became a wiser person in how to use money. What lesson has God entrusted you when you may have failed and messed up? We all do. But the good news in all of this is God is at work in these moments of our life, and God is, is at work in us. I think for a moment about Peter as he followed Jesus, and you know, you recall Peter's known for his failure, and Jesus predicted Peter would fail, not once, but three times. And Jesus had already told Peter that his name would be changed from Simon to Peter. Uh, Simon means shifting sand, sort of, and Peter means the rock. But despite this, uh, Jesus knew that Peter had his weakness, and so Jesus predicted that Peter would deny him not once but three times before the rooster would crow in the morning, and Peter did exactly that. Even with this warning of Jesus, he went and denied Christ not once but three times when the shadow of the crucifixion was there. Later on, Peter had to be heartbroken even after the resurrection, but Jesus went after Peter. Peter had gone out fishing and maybe was thinking about changing careers and going back to being a fisherman, his previous profession. But Jesus went out to Peter in front of all the other disciples after breakfast. Jesus looked at Peter and said, Peter, do you love me more than these, more than these fish and more than your fishing career? And Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And then Jesus said it again, do you love me more than these? And Peter said, yes, I love you, Lord. And then the third time, as if for every single time that Peter had faltered, Jesus was reaffirming his ministry, and Jesus said, do you love me more than these? And Peter said, yes, I do, Lord. I love you. And Jesus went on to recommission Peter. Jesus knew that the potential for Peter to be the rock was there, and he knew that Peter would learn from his own failure. Peter went on, of course, to preach on the day of Pentecost where over 3,000 people came to the Lord, and it was the beginning of the church and still is to the day, the birthday of the church. What is God teaching you and I in the moments that we failed? There's always a lesson there. So God, uh, through all these lessons of failure, God humbles us and God teaches us, and I think it also builds trust in the Lord. You know, Moses had leaned on his own strength, and I don't know, scholars are divided on whether or not Moses did the right thing in killing the Egyptian, right? There was a lot of injustice and oppression there, so Moses had the right to anger, but I think most people come down with this, that it wasn't the right thing to do in that moment. Moses was leaning on his own understanding, his own plans, rather than the plan of God. And so, uh, Moses in the desert, as he's thinking about his failure, maybe uh, his trust is growing in the Lord. So much so that 40 years later, when the Lord would call him from the burning bush, Moses was able to listen to the voice of the Lord and be willing to trust God to go before Pharaoh. Later on, when Moses is trapped between the armies of Egypt and the Red Sea and hemmed in. He has the faith to trust God and go to God in prayer and then to raise his staff all night long as the wind of the Lord goes through and provides a path for the Israelites from one side of the Red Sea to the other to escape the Egyptian. God was building trust in Moses, something that he needs for leadership. How is God building trust in you as you sort of work through some of the things in your own life? I think many times when we look at Moses, we see this amazing leader, which he was, but we forget this important chapter in Moses' life, a chapter, incidentally, which lasted 40 years. Now, as Moses would go on to lead the Israelites through the Exodus, but also they would go later on 
and they would go to the Jordan River, and they'd have the report of 12 spies, and the 12 spies would say this about going into the promised land. Ten of them would say, there's giants in the land, we can't go forward, even though Caleb and Joshua would say, listen, the land is full of bounty and blessing, and if we trust God, God will lead us through. The Israelites decided to go with the voice of the ten. The people that didn't believe and trust in God, they failed in that moment, and God let them wander through the wilderness for 40 years. I believe that while they were wandering in the wilderness, that Moses was pouring his own wisdom into those young Israelites, teaching them how that they could learn from the failure of their parents and grandparents so that one day, 40 years later, they would learn the lessons of failure. They would learn that God humbles us and God teaches us and that God builds trust in us. And 40 years later, as Moses handed the baton of leadership to Joshua, they would go across the Jordan River and they would face the giants and they would defeat them. God taught them a great lesson in the moment of failure. God is teaching us, and I don't know what you're going through right now, but if you've failed, and listen, all of us have failed in life, know that God works through failure sometimes better than through our successes. In fact, someone once said that failure is the best preparation for success. Maybe God is working in your failures, whether they're at school or at home or your place of work, sports field, or wherever you are, we all have a moment of failure. Know that, like Moses, that God can lead us and God can guide us through our failure. So let God humble you. Let God teach you. And let God allow Himself to build trust in you that you can become a better person. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, this morning as we think about this chapter of Moses' life where he failed. He fell short. But because he was willing to surrender himself to you, you taught him valuable lessons. Lessons in life and leadership that would later make him the great leader that he was. So help us to allow you to form and fashion us in your hands. Help us to be humbled and help us to be taught. And help us to trust you through all the chapters of failure, knowing that success is on the other side. In Christ's name, and all God's people said, Amen.